Hey guys, welcome back to the Rusty Beauty's Garage in which we are restoring this 1966 GT6 and we are making some major progress here but we also have some major problems <laughs> every once in a while. So if you've seen the last episode, and if you've seen the end of the last episode, you know about this problem that we have here. So first of all, we built a new inner seal here. We made it ourselves. We still have to make the strengthener inside. We haven't done that yet, but I wanted to fit the seal and the door to make sure that the, the door fits properly still and everything fits properly, and it does we still have a nice gap around the door and we still have a nice gap here this gap we're gonna have to work on we know that from the very beginning because the bottom of this door needs to be replaced because it's been it's been replaced already but not very well i believe you can see the line here where they have i can literally see how the door goes down and then it flares out that's why it's sticking out here so we're gonna adjust, we're gonna replace the whole bottom of this door and with that we're gonna adjust the gap around. So this is perfect, no problem. The problem though is here, I don't know if you see, I'm gonna, I might bring you closer so you can see the bottom of the seal is like sagging. And it's sagging like big time. Um, if we put a straight edge here through these clumps, you can see how in the center it's touching but there I have like half an inch probably or three eighths of a gap here. So this means that the center needs to go up. And that's normal for some of the seals. I had that experience before, I had to jack them up. But the problem is that when I jack this up it raises the whole seal higher. So I took it out, I tried to straighten the flange on the shrinker and you can see the marks here. And on the bench it works, it becomes straight, but as soon as I put it on the car, it takes this shape. And I couldn't figure out why, but now I think I figured it out. And for that, I'm gonna take it out of the car and I'm gonna show you on the bench. So, like I said, I shrunk this whole entire flange at the bottom on the shrinker. And you see, when you put it on the bench, it is pretty much straight now. But what happened actually is here in the center, because the flange was curved like that at the bottom, we straightened it up, but all this metal above it needed to go somewhere, right? And what, it hap what happened is it came out. Actually, I helped it. I helped it on the vise. I bent it more here so this edge can go up. But now, as you can see, we have a lot of metal here that is... So that made me think a little bit and I realized what the problem is. I measured from here, from the corner to this corner here and you see I put a mark. And then I came here and I measured the same thing. And here I have like more than quarter of an inch difference. And here, still, not the same way, but more or less. So by shrinking the flange, all I do is I push the metal up here. So what I need to do now is I need to actually straighten the flange, make this metal straight again, and bend the flange in the same height here and in the other end, but here I need to go a little bit higher. And we already have this hole here, but we're gonna figure that out. That's not such a big deal. The problem is that I don't have such a long brake. My brake is 36 inches, this is 40. So that's 36 inches to here. So I have another seven, eight inches here. So I'm not really sure how to do that. I think I'm gonna have to do it manually. Uh, 
other word. Right, let's see now here of course nothing moved oh here we are perfect now okay that looks better to me haha <laughs> that's better now so now it is even now there's no high point, point here you see because now we have the same amount of metal here and here and here how did they manage to do that I don't know but anyways wow it actually worked look at that I love it I don't know if you see, but it is nice and straight now. Good. So now I can take it out again and make our strengthener and assemble it with the inner seal. All right. So the seal is out and now we have to make a strengthener piece uh, from the, this is the bottom of the A post to here to the bottom of the B post. We still have a piece of the old strengthener here, but I decided not to cut it off. So the new one is gonna match this and we're gonna weld it here. But before we do that, I think I should uh, take out the inner seal now. It's held with two clicks there, one here and two more here. So if I take it out, I, I'm gonna be able to put it back in, in the exact position. So I think I should take it out, paint it, paint the A post and the B post inside, paint the edge of the floor, and uh, then we can put it on and just weld it. So we can continue directly with the strengthener and weld that too. Here we still have to put some spot welds underneath. We haven't done that. I just tucked it here and it's tucked here and here in the front, nothing you can see there's still a gap there so we need to close this gap here spot welded we need to drill holes outside to make plug welds here around this step which ends up being here 
So we have to have holes here and here for these uh, plug welds. And even here we have a flange on the from that bracket underneath. I don't know if you see it. Not really, but anyways, that bracket underneath also has a flange here so we can plug weld here. We have to cut this corner, but we're gonna wait for that until we install the seal end cap. But yeah, so let me take everything apart, paint it, do those spot welds here and there, and then we will put it back and we're gonna continue with the strengthener. There you go. So it's all welded at the bottom. As far as I could reach with the spot welder, maybe I can make another spot weld here. But I actually, I welded it down there. I don't know if you see. And here I was able to reach everywhere with the spot welder. So this side is good. Here as well, I reached as far as I could, but then at the end, I made two tacks here and here. So it's holding and made a whole bunch of plug welds here. You can remove this click now. I have two spot welds here and it looks great. I also drilled holes here and did plug welds. So now I have to grind them a little bit, I think. Mm, no, actually, they're not on the way. Th these are gonna be on the way. These I have to grind. Here underneath we're fine. Here I need to grind a little bit, sorry. Here I need to grind a little bit. And we're all good. So next we're gonna build this strengthener. Actually, I'm gonna paint now wherever I can reach again. And then we're gonna build the strengthener and after the strengthener only this piece needs to be rebuilt and we're gonna be ready for the outer seal yay all right so i made this piece oh it's upside down what okay that's right <laughs> okay so that's how it goes and uh, I didn't show you how I made it because there's nothing special about it. It's just, well, actually there is something special about it. So if you pay attention here to these two flanges, this one is further in and this one is further out. There's just a quarter of an inch maybe difference. And you see how the original A post here at the bottom, no, that's not original, I made it, but that's how it was. And the B post, they are stepped. So the same way here, we made a bend out here and the bend in here so now it has a little step here so before i paint it inside and weld it i'm gonna drill the drain holes because here there must be drain holes All right, so this panel is painted and while it's drying, I guess instead of watching it dry, Rusty is complaining outside. Instead of watching it dry, we can repair this, I guess, and then weld the other piece. So let's see what we're gonna do here. All right, so first of all, let's put the two parts here and see how far they cover. Okay, so this is where this thing needs to have a step. Okay, um, let's take them out again. So we only need to repair this corner here. Here we can make a little step and forget about it.
I don't have one of these air tools that can make that automatically but maybe it's time to buy one I don't know let's repair this side first and then if we don't like this we might just cut it off and weld a new piece with a step because I don't like this step So I made a little flange for here, but it's not, it shouldn't be straight, right? It needs to follow this curve, so it needs to be bent this way. And also it goes a little bit like this, which, which actually the outside doesn't follow the same shape, but the inner here it is nice. So we're gonna make it the same as here. And then the outside, if we have to grind the other way, we're going to grind, but the inner side, we're going to bend this way. So we said it needs to go this way. So we need to shrink a little bit here. That's it. Just a little bit, you see, very little curve. And now we want it to curve also this way, which means we have to shrink this side. So you see now it's curved this way and this way. Okay, so I'm gonna trim a little bit the end and we're gonna have to shorten here a little bit. Okay, obviously we're gonna have to replace this as well. <laughs> Let's weld the flange where it's gonna be and then we're gonna cut this off. Looks like we're gonna have to make a new piece for here. Let's make sure this still fits. So we hit two birds with one stone. This is what I mean. We're gonna raise this up a little bit, but we're gonna cut this flange so it can fit inside this little step. Okay, that's better. Hmm, I like having a bead roller. Okay, so this is done. Now let's weld the strengthener and we'll come back to this. We'll paint it and maybe I think next we should do this panel here.
right, it's all welded, ground down and painted. It's ready for the outer seal. Well, I don't think so. First of all, I forgot to grind here. So I need to grind this because this is where the flange of the outer seal goes. Like I ground it here and up there. And second, I wanted to extend a little bit here the lower A post because ever since I made it, I never mentioned that, but um, I make the same mistake every time. When I bend this uh, curvature here, always the bottom of the A post becomes a little bit on a V, which is normal because I'm shrinking the top and the bottom raises. So every time I make the same mistake and I was gonna fix that earlier, but I forgot and now I notice it that um, here it is going up, you see? So I just want to add another, I think it's about a uh, quarter inch here in this end. So, so it is not like this because now when I put the seal, every time I try to clamp it, I can't really clamp it in this end because this is too high. Smile, smile for the picture. <laughs> okay, so focus. Okay, so we ground here a little bit and we painted it again and I extended that plunge down. So now we have a straight line underneath. I, I cut a little bit and I painted that panel inside and I'll show you later, it's drying now. So while it's drying, let's make a seal end cap again. So we made one for the other side. We actually made two for the other side. <laughs> The first one I didn't like, so we turned it into something else after, I don't remember what, but we used the metal anyways. And now I just cut a piece for another one for this side, so let's uh, find our metal template and bend the flange around. Okay, so we made this template, or we actually updated this template because I had I had two previous versions that we used for the other side. I think both of them were okay, but I updated it. So that's my final piece. That's the shape that we need to have at the end. And I just left a little bit more around for the flanges. Actually here, we need a flange only from, from here to here, the short flange, and then we continue with the long flange down there. So we actually need to bend it all the way down there. But here from this notch in, we don't need because that's where it goes inside the seal. So I'm gonna cut this off. And we made this piece of metal here that matches this shape that we're gonna use to bend this flange down or up whatever we want to call it. We're going to clamp it. Yeah. And now we can flip it around and tap it down. I have the feeling it's going to move on us. I don't know why, but So we have no issue here where it is a straight line, but the problem is here where it's curved, we're going to need to shrink that. See now here it's trying to go up because we have too much material, so we're going to force it down. And we're going to have to shrink that material. Okay. And this, this piece of metal is also a really nice height. So we just take an angle grinder 
and grind it to this level. And just like that, our end cap is ready. So we have the cap ready. I'm gonna paint the back so it can dry and we're gonna go back to our uh, rear and the bottom of the, the front of the rear fender. So I painted it inside. I stripped actually, I stripped the paint here and this flange because um, here we're gonna have to spot weld it uh, and this paint is not conductive. So, so I cleared the paint from here and I sprayed it with weld through primer cleaned the paint from here, cleaned the paint from here, drilled holes here for plug welds, and now we can mount it. I also shortened it here, and we're gonna have to shorten it a lot more. I'm not gonna overlap it. So I was thinking here, maybe I should do fit this technique, where you overlap the pieces like this, and then you cut them on 45. So when they're cut on 45, they overlap perfectly not the whole piece, but just the cup overlaps nicely and you have a very nice flush uh, surface here to work with. However, with this technique, there's one big problem which nobody talks about, but you always have a cutoff piece staying on the other side. And in this case, we don't have access to the back of the panel. So that piece is gonna stay inside forever and I don't like that. If it magically falls down as we cut it, I can take it out from here, but it's, the odds are that it might just stay hanging on some metal there and it's just gonna stay inside it. I don't like that idea. So as I have it clamped right now, I might just cut it maybe a touch, like I can see here where the other piece is and I know that it's a straight line, the cut. So I might just cut it here, just above the, the cut. So we can overlap it by just maybe millimeter. So when I cut, everything is gonna turn into dust. There's not gonna be, there's not gonna be a piece in the back. So I just marked where to cut it now. If it doesn't work, we're gonna just do a butt welding, but let's try. You see, this is a straight line. So a straight line between these two marks, which are a little bit higher than this line, is going to give us a good one millimeter overlap. So you see now, here I can do fit this technique. So I'm just going to tuck it how he does. I'm gonna tuck it in a few places to keep it down. And then we're gonna start cutting, but here we have the, we have this piece inside. You know the U-channel that goes inside, the, this piece that we're gonna weld, we're gonna plug weld to. So here I have to make a really shallow cut, at least in this area. But let me tuck it first. Very gentle tacks. Let me cut this now. So I don't know why we weld here. Like we should weld only this and <laughs> leave this non-welded. But anyway, so let me cut the first short piece here. still have a big gap. I don't like that. Honestly, now when I'm pushing here, this whole metal goes in, it dips in. I don't want to weld it like that. I need to cut a longer part. Okay, I'm gonna cut it all the way. Ah, I don't like this. Okay, now I can tuck it here. I just need to get rid of all the burr. 
And I still have a huge gap. I don't understand why. Did I cut too low? I don't know. My blade is a thin blade. All right, I don't understand why I have a bigger gap. Like on Fitzy's video, you can see he has a, like, he doesn't have a gap at all. The two 45s just touch each other and then you have a nice and smooth line. For me, I don't know. I have a thin blade. It's not a super thick blade, but whatever. Let me finish welding it and then we're going to grind it and we will see if I did a good job or not. I tried a different technique this time. Somebody told me in the comments before that what they do is they weld a little bit and then grind it right away. And then they weld a little bit more and then grind it right away. And what that supposedly does is it doesn't allow the metal to cool down rapidly, which supposedly when it cools down rapidly, it shrinks. I'm thinking here now as I'm doing it and I see it, it sunk a lot in. Like if you look at this, it sunk. The whole seam from one end to the other sunk. I don't know if you see here, but I have like probably 330 seconds. It's not an eighth, but it's not a 16th too. So it sunk in the middle. And I'm thinking here, as soon as I made a stitch here, like one inch stitch, I saw it, it went in. So why did it go in? because the metal expanded from the heat. So I want it to shrink. I want it to shrink to come back. So that technique is not a very good technique for me. Once I weld it, I need to cool it down right away, which is gonna shrink it again and it's gonna allow it to come back eventually. Not that this technique works for me. I don't know anymore. Really, that, I don't know anymore. So now there's some holes inside on the A post. So I'm hoping that with a pry bar or something, I'm going to be able to reach down there and uh, push a little bit and hammer on the outside to help me keep this, bring this back out. Well, that's a lot. I hate that this happens because, because I prep my parts so nice to make sure that they, they are straight and when I weld them, everything goes to hell. <sighs> Again, I'm going to try my stinger, but I don't like that. Let's see. So what they say, the first first in, last out.
All right, that's where we're gonna leave it. It's it's not invisible, but at least it is nice and smooth now. And there are just these cavities that need to be filled with uh, body filler. Everything else is good. Well, it's not too bad after all. Right. It's not invisible, but it's not too bad. So this is welded and ground down. Here I welded and ground down. And now it is time for the seal. Exciting. Well, I was hoping to have the seal installed in this video, but um, some of the processes took way too long, longer than expected and the video becomes very long so i'm gonna cut it here and uh, we're gonna continue with the seal installation in the next one because there's a lot of preparation with the seal as well that i've done already but i know that i'm not gonna be able to fit in this video unless i make it like an hour long which i don't want to so anyways thanks for watching guys thanks for commenting and subscribing thanks for supporting me on patreon thanks for sending me money via paypal it is all really, really uh, highly appreciated. Even if you're just watching and sharing and commenting and all that stuff, it is all a great help for my channel to grow. So I really appreciate everything that you do for me, guys. So um, I'm just gonna remind you that there's a link in the description for my Patreon page, or if you wanna do one-time donations, you can do that as well by uh, via PayPal on my email elin.yakov at rustybeauties.com um, all the information is in the description of this video uh, so if you're interested in supporting me financially just check in the description of this video but you don't need to do any financial support in order to have access to all the videos um, there's no such thing as early access or view content here everybody has the same rights whether they support me financially or just by sharing and um, being a subscriber so uh, with that said guys i'm gonna sign off and we're gonna continue soon in the next video thanks for watching bye well it looks like christmas i know but it is april 18th it never snows in april and apparently it's not joking Thank you.